People have a hard time understanding the concept of sewer systems. If you can imagine, every resident has a connection to the sewer and every street has a connection to the sewer. We're talking thousands and thousands of miles of piping underground that people are not really aware is there. The Great Lakes Water Authority operates a regional wastewater system for 79 communities in three southeast Michigan counties, including the city of Detroit. Known as the GLWA, we provide effective and efficient wastewater services to nearly 2.8 million people. We all create wastewater every day, but most people don't understand where it goes and what happens to it once it leaves their house. Wastewater is basically used water. In our home, this includes water from brushing our teeth, showering, using the toilet, and washing our dishes and clothes. It flows into your house plumbing, passing through a trap that prevents sewer gases from entering your house. The moment the used water goes into a sewer, it becomes wastewater. Wastewater leaves the house through a lateral pipe. A lateral pipe is typically buried either in your front yard or in your backyard, and it's a pipe that's buried deep that connects your home's plumbing system to the street. Sewer systems are a network of pipes, pumps, and gates that move wastewater from homes, businesses, and industries to a centralized treatment facility. At the centralized treatment facility is where we clean the wastewater before we put it back into an environment to protect our Great Lakes. Some of the larger sewer pipes are more than 17 feet in diameter and extend more than 191 miles. They are so big, you could drive a semi-truck through them. When it rains, another source of flow can enter a sewer. This is stormwater. Stormwater is rainfall that makes its way into waterways and also sometimes into sewer systems. The rainfall flows from the roofs of buildings and pavement, such as driveways, parking lots, and roads. It also flows over the ground when water is not absorbed by soil or plants. A lot of older communities and metropolitan areas have buildings and homes constructed before the 1950s. These older homes may have connections that carry stormwater from the roof or groundwater around the home into a sewer lateral that flows into the sewer network. These are called combined sewers. Modern homes constructed later than the 1950s don't combine stormwater with wastewater. These modern systems are called separated sewer systems. In separated sewer systems, stormwater flows through dedicated pipes directly into local rivers and streams and never mixes with wastewater. Our regional system receives flow from both combined and separated systems, making it a combined system. Each day, the average flow of wastewater through our sewer system is more than 500 million gallons. So on normal days, that's the equivalent of filling up Ford Field approximately one and a half times. And during large storm events, filling up Ford Field more than five times. The member partner communities within the GLWA service area maintain the neighborhood sewers. The only evidence of these neighborhood sewers may be manholes that provide access for workers to inspect, repair, and keep the sewers clean. The storm sewers that serve highways such as I-75 and I-94 are the responsibility of the Michigan Department of Transportation. The drainage from these areas flows to either natural waterways or into the neighborhood sewers, eventually making their way to the GLWA regional sewer system. After traveling from the neighborhood and highway sewer systems, the flow enters the GLWA collection system and works its way to the Water Resource Recovery Facility. Our Water Resource Recovery Facility is designed to handle up to 1.7 billion gallons per day making it the largest in North America. This highly regulated and permitted facility removes the waste, trash, debris, and harmful bacteria from the wastewater. The water is then returned back to our Great Lakes, rivers, and streams in accordance with government regulations. The system is monitored with high-tech instrumentation that tracks water levels in the sewers and the status of mechanical and electrical equipment. We'll get alarms in our system, which are by way of level sensors or rain gauges, which will notify us that, hey, the local interceptors are filling up fast. So then we'll call our operators in, and they will come into facilities. We will bring that flow into our locations, either by way of gravity 
or we will pump them in by way of our storm pumps through our pump stations. So we bring the rain into our CSO location. CSO means combined sewer overflow. So we're combining rainwater with sewer water. Then that water will fill up the sewer. So now your homes, they can't flush. Uh, the commercial properties, they can't release and drain water. During rainfall, stormwater is added to the wastewater already being carried in a system and begins to fill the sewers. Picture a tub and shower. The tub drain is designed to let the water leave the tub while the shower is running. But if you add a second shower head, which doubles the water, the tub starts to fill faster than it can drain. The drain can only handle so much water. Now add a third or a fourth shower head to represent a very large storm. The tub fills up and eventually floods your bathroom floor. This is how all sewer systems respond during large storm events. There are a wide variety of devices to control water within the sewer system, including gates, inflatable dams, and concrete walls known as weirs. Using powerful pistons and motors, the gates can open and close, forcing the water to move from one pipe to another. Or we would use the storm pumps from the pump station and pump them into our locations. We would screen them, which we uh, use our bar screens and bar racks. What that means is we get the trash out of it. You know, all the debris, the rocks, uh, paper, anything you see on the roads or that would normally go to the main wastewater plant. We test it, make sure it's safe to release because we have a permit that we have to follow. We release it into the Detroit or the Rouge River, make sure it's safe for aquatic life and uh, swimming. What is a big rain event? We really define that as an event that exceeds our design uh, capacity to convey, right? So we have pipes and pumps and we can convey a certain amount. And that amount really is about 1.7 inches of rain in one hour. Now that's no rain before it, it's no rain after it. We've had this design standard for decades, right? This is what we designed for. So when you see a, an inch of rain come and then another one and a half inches and another one and a half inches, you're getting to the point where you're exceeding the design capacity. Now we can, we can handle some of that because it doesn't rain uniformly over the entire district at the same time. Uh, but the reality is if it goes on long enough like that, what happens is, is, is flooding can occur. Once the sewer pipes are full, water begins to enter the remote treatment facilities that are only used during large storm events. If the event gets very large, intense flow may make its way to overflow points known as outfalls, located along the Rouge and Detroit rivers to protect basements from flooding. Engineers and meteorologists typically refer to the size of storm events relative as how often the storm might be expected to occur. Storm events are more like playing a board game. When you spin the wheel, you may land on the 10-year, 100-year, or 1,000-year wedge, even though the 10-year wedge is much larger than those of the 100 and 1,000-year events. Upgrading the entire neighborhood, highway, and GLWA system to accommodate very large storm events would be a significant undertaking, because there are over 14,000 miles of publicly owned and privately owned pipes in the networks. Solutions for these conditions are very expensive, requiring decades of planning and construction to resolve. GLWA embraces innovation and is always implementing new technologies and techniques to improve the system. So we're often asked, as a resident, what can I do to help? I wanna be a good steward, right? What can I do? So a couple things you can do ahead of time, right? You can have a plumber take a look at your plumbing. There are certain devices that you can put in your home to help prevent basement backups. One of those is a backflow prevention device, or sometimes they'll call it a check valve. You can install that backflow preventer on your sewer lateral, where it will prevent any water from the sewer system in the street to work its way back into your home. Make sure that the storm water is not mixing with the sewer and install a sump pump. Install a rain garden. Potentially install rain barrels to capture your roof drains so that you can use that water later, save money, or just prevent it from getting into our system. Think before you flush. Don't put in flushable wipes. Don't put in things that are not biodegradable or don't break down in water that could potentially bind up our sewer systems and cause backups. What we like to say, only flush the three P's. Pee, poop, and paper, toilet paper. Keep your gutters and downspouts clean. This keeps drainage from your roof from collecting around basement walls and working its way into your home. Help minimize debris in the system by throwing trash away, not into the sewers. If you see leaves blocking a catch basin in front of your home, clean them up and throw them away. 
You can also volunteer to help clean up local creeks and streams to keep litter and debris from clogging them. The goal is to keep the water flowing. Through collaborative efforts, the Great Lakes Water Authority is working hand in hand with the communities we serve to improve our wastewater system so we can handle the demands of the future. To learn more about what we're doing to develop future improvements and keep the system operating at peak performance, visit glwater.org. Now that you know more about wastewater and where it goes, we hope you'll think about it differently. There are so many dedicated and amazing systems that keep our water flowing and guide it to where it needs to go, all working together, all the time, for you.